Hello and grüß Gott Schnitzel! Welcome to my first complete English tutorial series. Some people have seen my German one and asked me to do an English version, so here we go. Arnold Schwarzenegger was born around the corner, so I might sound like Get to the chopper or I'll be big. Okay, what's the matter? We will import a whole new weapon to Skyrim and I show you the whole process like 3D modeling with Cinema 4D, texturing with Mudbox 2011, we will create the DDS maps with Photoshop and the beloved NIF files with NIFScope and in the end we will import the whole thing to Skyrim using the almighty creation kit. I've got another image over here. Those are the files we need. We need a sort ESP, that's the plugin file. We need a sort NIF and first person sort NIF. Sort NIF contains the 3D model of the sort when displayed in inventory or dropped and the first person sort NIF is the weapon itself when equipped. We need texture files like the sort DDS, that's the diffuse map, the texture. We need sort NDDS, that's the normal map responsible for the 3D effects and sort MDDS, that's the specular map. And yes, I know this is not called specular map because the real one is inside of the normal map, but I like my version. Sort MDDS is specular map and responsible for metallic uh, light reflections in game. Today we will create the objects for the NIF files, the sword object, that's the weapon itself, and the blood object, that's the body for the blood textures. And I switch to Cinema 4D now and see you soon. My German tutorial lasts about an hour, so let's save some time and speed up the whole process. I'm using the German version of Cinema 4D, but I give my best to translate the most important things. First you have to turn off the world grid, just select filter and check off the world grid. Press the middle mouse button, change to front view, press the middle mouse button again. Down here mode, display settings and select the three dots to choose an image of your sword. That's our sword. I'll use splines to build the whole shape. That's how splines work. I change to 3D view, add a circle spline, copy paste it by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V. I move the copy to the right, add a loft nerb, select both circles and put them into the loft nerb. You get a 3D shape. You can copy paste another circle, move it into the loft nerb, change the position and downsize it by pressing the T key or rotate it by pressing the R key. That's the main technique I use to build the uh, sword. I delete the loft nerb, change to front view and I have to place splines along the shape of the blade. So. Uh, they have to look like the profile of the blade, so I select spline, end spline and change the sides to 6, that's ok. I zoom in, edit mode, point mode, selection tool, check off this box so all points are selected, not only the visible ones. I select all points, press the R key to rotate and while rotation you can press the shift key to rotate in 5 degree steps. I rotate it up to 90 degree, move it to the beginning of the blade and downsize it by pressing T and click the red square. Something like that. I copy the whole thing and move the copy downwards along the shape of the sword. I downsize it, T and red square, copy paste and repeat the whole process until the end of the plate. In the end I transform it down to something like 5% or less. That's fine. I change to 3D view, press the blue arrow, select all splines, and 
and flatten them like the shape of the blade. So select all splines, press the T key and along the blue square flatten it down to something like 10, 11 percent. Add a loft nerve, select all splines and put them into the loft nerve. That's our blade. So the next part is the hilt. The profile of the hilt in this area looks like a three-sided spline and in this area like a circle. So first I add a end spline, three sides, zoom into the spline, edit mode, object mode, rotate it into position 90 degree and 90 degree to the left, move it into position of the hilt, zoom in, point mode, select those points, move them up into this area, that's okay, copy the whole thing, move it to the left, Point mode, select those points, move them up, change to 3D view, <coughs> select the first spline, select those points, and transform them down to something like that. Do the same with the second spline, select those points. By, uh, by holding the shift button, you can select both points. This looks fine. Change to front view and add a circle spline. Bring it into position. Rotate it 90 degree downsize it that looks fine repeat the whole process copy paste enlarge and something like 10% in the end, or 20, let's say 20%, change to 3D view, add a loft nerb, select all new splines and put them into the loft nerb. Select all circles from the spline, from the loft nerb, and rotate them 90 degree to the right. That looks fine. You can change the position of the splines or the shape and whatsoever. I have to save some time, so let's just go on. Uh, we need the second side of the hilt. So select uh, symmetry. I, I guess in English it's something like mirror. Select the loft nerve of the hilt and put it into the mirror. That's our hilt. Let's move on to the second part of the hilt. We will need circles as profile shape. So add a circle spline, move it into position, rotate it 90 degrees, downsize it, change to 3D view, and edit to mode, flatten the whole thing, bring it into position, something like that. Front view again, copy paste the whole thing, move it up, copy paste, downsize, and repeat the whole thing.
So. I will skip this little detail here. That's not so important for me. Downsize. Copy paste and finally something like 20%. Change to 3D view. Once again, add a loft nerve. Select all new splines and put them into the loft nerve. And that's our handle. Looks fine. Okay, uh, as mentioned before, you can change the position of the splines, the shape and so on as you wish. But the most important thing, select the loft nerve of the blade. We've got too many faces in this area, too many polygons. So select the loft nerve and change this value to something like 10. You get less polygons now, or let's try 12. 12 is fine in this case, and V to something like 3. That's fine. Do the same with the upper part of the loft of the hilt. Select the loft nerb, set this to something like 15. I'll render it. Yes, okay, 15 is okay. And this to 3. And the mirror, open the mirror, select the loft nerb and change this to let's say 12 uh, 15 and 3 that's fine and then you have to select each loft nerve and press edit mode open the loft nerve and delete the objects inside of it so that's the first one that's the second loft nerve edit mode open delete both and open the mirror, select the loft nerve, edit mode, open the loft nerve, delete the objects, the objects, select the mirror, edit mode, open the mirror and get a loft nerve out of it. After that, delete the mirror and that's it. That's our sword. Uh, finally, you can select all objects, all three nerves right click and join objects and delete it's one object now go to face mode press ctrl a and as you see the the blade itself it's blue those uh, normals are in the wrong direction so right click on it and press face normals that doesn't work okay in this case um, face mode polygon mode Live selection, select the blade, all parts of the blade, right click and change normals. That's the final shape of our sword. Next thing to do is to triangulate the whole model. Just select your sword, face polygon mode, press Ctrl A to select all faces, right click on the sword and choose triangulate. Next thing, change the layout from regular to BP UV edit. Select your sword. Press the paint assistant. Go on, go on. Select the size of your texture. In my case it's 1024 and check off the color box. Click and and close change back to regular layout object mode and that's our sword just press file export wavefront object and save as sword object on the desktop okay now we need the body for the blood textures live selection tool face mode and select all parts of the blade on both sides of course okay selection invert selection 
and press the uh, delete to delete the hilt. That's the body for our blood textures. File, export, wavefront object once again and call it blood object. Okay, that's all. We've got our model for the sword and the blood body. And I show you how to texture the whole thing in the next tutorial. Thank you very much. Ciao.